I think we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody. My name is Sue. I'm a program assistant here at the Elmhurst Public Library. And uh, tonight I have turned on the live transcript option. If you do not want to see that on, the, on your screen, there is a way to turn it off. You're either gonna find the live transcript button down in the Zoom menu. It has a little carrot symbol up in the upper right corner. If you click that and you're gonna click hide subtitle. If you don't see live transcript, you're gonna look for more with the three dots. Click it and also you will find hide transcript and you can turn those on and off at any time during uh, the Zoom program this evening. I'm gonna launch a poll right now that's asking how many people are watching on your screens. If you wouldn't mind answering that question real quickly, that does help us with our attendance numbers. So tonight, uh, David and Robin are gonna be answering questions as we go along. And so we would really like for you to use the chat feature this evening. You'll also find that on the Zoom menu and it has a little uh, like word bubble, like a cartoon comic strip uh, word bubble. You can see that there. I in the chat right now, you will find links to two different programs that are coming up. Uh, the first one is this coming Sunday, Classical Music 101. There is an in-person and virtual option, and there are links to both of those. And then the following week on Tuesday, September 28th from 7 to 8 p.m., we have a Beneficial Bugs, both in-person and virtual, which is the um, it goes along with our one book one community and there's also a link to uh, the information on the library's website about that book and the programs that go along with it. The classical mm -hmm. music program on Sunday is from one until two thirty. <clears throat> and now I'd like to tell you a little bit about our speakers this evening. Our speakers today are David Wiley and Robin Dawson from Medicare Solutions Network. As independent insurance brokers, David and Robin represent virtually all of the major companies available in Illinois. This empowers them with a unique perspective to share with clients to combat the rising costs of healthcare as we age and navigate the world of Medicare with ease. David is based in Lyle and Robin, the Northwest side of Chicago. Both speak frequently at local libraries, retirement homes, and financial planning offices on the topic of Medicare, and we welcome them both tonight. Cool. Robin, you want to kick it off? Yep. Thank you so much, Sue. Appreciate you guys having us back. Um, David and I are very passionate about this product and, and, and the topic of Medicare, and we definitely want you to feel free to pepper us with as many questions as possible tonight. I'll be monitoring the chat throughout. And from time to time, David will want to take a drink of water, so I'll be happy to answer those live. And also, we'll hang online uh, toward the end if we have some time to open it up for live questions, if that's a possibility. So um, please feel free to ask those questions. Chances are you're not the only one that has that question. Um, keep, them, keep them general. If you need something answered more specifically, you've got our contact info here, and you can feel free to follow up with either of us um, after tonight's program. Cool. Thank you, Robin. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. My name is David Wiley. That was Robin Dawson. Um, full disclosure, we're insurance agents, but please don't let that scare you here tonight. This is only about educating you about the world of Medicare. Uh, we've been speaking at the Elmhurst Public Library for, I guess, going on 10 years now. Started teaching this Medicare 101 class, if you'd call it that, years ago, because we just found so many people who came to the world of Medicare and they made what we would uh, diplomatically call less than fully informed decisions. You come to a world and it comes at you fast. And what you'll find is uh, if you didn't know you were going to be turning 65 at about 64 and a half, your mailbox fills up with so much crap it almost tips over. The insurance companies know you're turning 65 and they will absolutely hound you with literature and phone calls. And now we're even getting reports of people knocking on your front door. Uh, this is compounded by the fact that all your friends and family certainly mean you well and they want to tell you what to do, maybe even if they don't know what they've done. And Robin and I always call this Medicare thing. It's a world of partial sentences and half truths and floating asterisks that you wouldn't even know were there if you didn't educate yourself, didn't come up to speed. And that's what we wanna do here tonight is to make you dangerous enough to know 
that you know you don't know everything and and maybe that's where we could step in and help you with details farther down the road typically most people are going to come to this world of medicare you're going to feel a lot like this little guy here uh, a lot of moving parts and i'll give you that medicare initially can be uh, very overwhelming because there's a lot of information and actually it's not a lot of information it's a lot of propaganda uh, but you've been you've been removed from this fray for years. Most people will come to the world of Medicare, they'll come off of their employer plan. And the employer plan was very simple, take it or leave it. That was pretty much your choice. And you never really knew what was going into that program. Maybe if you drilled into it a little bit, but all the conversations that went on in the corporate room about deductibles and co-insurance and co-payments and networks and wellness benefits, all that was predetermined for you. And they brought you a one size fits most. And then you had to choose, take it or leave it. Well, of course you took it. It was a good benefit. This Medicare thing is going to be different. Now you get to make those decisions. Everything in the world of your group health insurance was husband and wife, family, we're together, we're together. Medicare says, nope, nope, we're, we're going to break you up, not because it's a mean thing to do, but because it's a really good thing to do. The situation that mom is in could be completely different from the situation dad's in. And now we're able to customize a package for you. Not only can you customize it, but you get to tune it up. You get to look at it every year. And we are rapidly headed for what we jokingly call the most wonderful time of the year. It's the Medicare annual open enrollment. That starts October 15th, but boy, that doesn't stop them from already pummeling you with more literature. Uh, the ones you really wanna look out for, if you're already in Medicare, keep an eye out for your annual notice of change. All the insurance that you've got has to send you updates about how things might be changing for the next year. Typically, supplements won't do that because supplements roll over. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But certainly, your drug programs by now should have given you a heads up if there's any change for next year. And if you're one of these Advantage program people, they would have sent you that as well. We'll talk about that all later down the road. But just be aware of the fact that the commercials that are on TV are an embarrassment to me and the industry that I represent. They are shameless. They will scream at you about big changes to Medicare. There will be no big changes to Medicare. You may be losing your coverage. You're not going to lose your coverage, but these are sales hooks. These are advertisements. The big floating Medicare card, call now to get all the benefits you're entitled to. This is advertising. I would suggest that you might wanna stay away from that. What you'll find in this world of Medicare is there's good information to be had if you'll avail yourself of it. You've got a new best friend in the world and it's Medicare. They're there to protect and support you. They keep a short leash on the insurance agents, which is a good thing, but there's information for you that's not propaganda. It's not just simply glittering generalities. And this is a good example. I spoke with a client today who said the Medicare and You 2022 books are now hitting the mailbox. This is the encyclopedia of my industry. It does two things incredibly well, chock full of knowledge, and it's a tremendous sleeping aid. If you have trouble dozing off, this thing will knock you down in short order. It's a dry read, but you wanna find out about how drug programs work and what supplements are and why you might wanna look at an Advantage program. This will be a good resource for you because it's from the federal government. I see so much advertising out there, Charlie Marshall Services. I mean, they'll do anything they can. They'll put a bird on their literature to make you think it's from Medicare. It's not. You'll get phone calls from people who sound very, very sincere, intimating that they're with Medicare and they're there to help you enroll. And they've been assigned to your account. This is all sales stuff. You want to find out where they are. I would always recommend working with a broker who represents all the companies and somebody that's local that understands the turf where you are, not just some teleservice person calling from Florida. This Medicare and You book is backed up and supported by maybe the easiest phone number you'll ever get, 1-800-MEDICARE. Pretty simple. They're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week at this point. Basically, they get six national holidays off, but otherwise they're there 24 hours a day to answer your calls. And like Jake from State Farm, they're waiting for your call at two in the morning. They'll never reach out to you, but if they tell you they're going to call you back, they will call you back. You can always tell good customer service because you get their first name and their last name. And they're very professional. I think if you if you haven't been in the world of Medicare, you will be uh, pleasantly surprised at how good the customer service is because they know they got to support you and, and we know you can take your business elsewhere. 
the book, the 1-800 number supported by a wonderful website. And I know, don't get too scared. It's not that difficult, but medicare.gov, G-O-V. Please note that. I don't know how they ever even let medicare.com come to market. That's a sales site. As you approach Medicare or you're in that world already, I am leery of recommending any websites that don't say .gov on them because what you're going to find is that you're stumbling into a world where they will capture your information. And before you can even get off the computer, your phone's already ringing. Who is that, honey? It's somebody from the insurance company because now they know that you're interested. And coincidentally, every ad that you'll see on your browser for the next few weeks is all about Medicare. They knew you were looking. But this is the federal government, pure source of information. These are all drop-down menus. You could actually, if you scroll all the way down here to the bottom, there is the ability to order that book, Medicare and You. You can order it. They'll send it to you free of charge. All sorts of great information here. You can find out about your doctors and who takes Medicare. Most of them do, but it's always good to double check. You can look at the different plans, and that's what we use this for this time of year, starting October 15th. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's Medicare open enrollment. And from October 15th to December 7th, you have the chance, if you're already in Medicare, to make adjustments to your coverage. It would be smart to look at that. Most people in this world make one decision. They throw it in a drawer. They never look at it again. That's a critical blunder. You certainly want to stay in touch and make sure every year you're in the best possible place. And that's what this ability to run your prescription drugs through the Medicare calculator, find out what the best program is for you for the next year. If you're brand new to Medicare, certainly we're going to utilize this tool to find the best drug program for you. But then every year we like to take a look at it, make sure that we're tuned up and ready to go for, at this point, we're now starting to look at calendar year 2022. What is Medicare? Pretty simply, Medicare is the medical benefit for people who have retired. Uh, most people have come to Medicare in years past as of the age of hitting 65. Medicare always starts the first day of the month in which you turn 65, or rather it could start at the first day of the month in which you turn 65. As long as you've worked 40 quarters or your spouse has worked 40 quarters, you're entitled to this. And it's a wonderful benefit. But understand, it's not Social Security. Social Security is a different benefit. Medicare is the medical benefit. Social Security is where they give you back less than you ever gave them. You can have one without the other. You can have both of them together. Or you could pass on Medicare and delay your enrollment. We'll talk about that in a second. But the important takeaway of this slide is that original Medicare was never designed to cover 100% of your expenses. You were always expected to have skin in the game deductibles, coinsurance, copayments. What we want to know is what do we get with Medicare and what could we possibly do to avoid the exposure of what Medicare doesn't cover? This is where your journey begins. This is the, the Medicare card. Sometimes it takes you by surprise. If, if you're receiving Social Security benefit payments, because you could have fired that up at 62, if they can pull the premium for Part B, they'll go ahead and send you that card automatically. But if you haven't started your Social Security benefit payments, they're not going to turn this on automatically. That's a common misconception. They're going to wait to hear from you because they want to know that you're giving them approval to bill you for the Part B premiums. A and B are going to cover us for different stuff. Most people in years gone by would have started A and B the month they turned 65. You're born on the 23rd. It doesn't matter. Medicare would go into effect the first of the month in which you turn 65. And I, I would suppose if you looked at your mom and dad's cards, you'd see that that's exactly what they did. Because in years gone by, 65 was the, the finish line. It was the, it was the get your gold watch and take the grandkids fishing. I'm hanging it up. But the baby boomers are driving tremendous changes in this market. Notably, many continue to work past 65. Uh, if you listen to the, the financial gurus, Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman, they're telling you that 70 is the new 65. Okay, fine. But a lot of baby boomers are working past 65. And this represents one of the first potholes, one of the first big mistakes that you could make, which would be either not activating it when you needed it or activating it when, when you didn't need it. And what we mean there is A and B cover us for different situations. A is all of your facilities. B is all of your services. We're going to tear that apart here in a second. But A has no premium. 
it is a set of benefits for the facilities that you utilize in the world of healthcare. The fact that it has no premium can usually make it pretty attractive and not going to be hurting you if you activate it. But this Medicare Part B, many baby boomers continue to work past the age of 65. Most baby boomers at 65 are in better shape than their parents were at 55. They continue to work. They like the money. They enjoy the socialization. And they certainly love the medical benefit that they're getting through their employer. Now, if there's more than 20 people that work where you have your group insurance, there's a, a term for that. We call that creditable coverage. Creditable coverage is your ticket to delay activating this either A or B, but particularly the B because the B has a premium. And if you continue to work and you can continue to cover that, that medical coverage through work, and there's more than 20 people work there, that creditable coverage allows you to delay activating Medicare without penalty anywhere down the line. Your friends and family are going to tell you, boy, if you don't activate Medicare when you turn 65, there's going to be penalties and lockouts. There's going to be real problems. And that would be an example of what Robin and I would call a, a partial sentence or a half truth. If your group is under 20, then yeah, I'm sorry, you do need to activate that Medicare Part B because that would stand in primary position. But if it's over 20, let's have a little clubhouse meeting. Let's make sure that you might not need to activate that Part B because you'd be paying premiums for something that you didn't need. Um, working with a situation right now, it's, it's kind of sad. Mom is working at Jewel Osco. She's 81 years of age. She's working there because by working at least 12 hours a week, this is one of those sweet union deals that's no longer offered to us as, as mortals, but she's got this wonderful program. She pays $40 a week to have full coverage for her and her husband. Her husband's 90 years of age. Well, I'm talking with the daughter because the daughter says, look, we just, we can't have mom continuing to work. I mean, come on, 81 and still working. I don't, I don't care what you're doing. That's still a lot for somebody at that age. So we're talking about why, what they're going to do is they're going to come to Medicare. They're going to, they're going to end the group coverage through work. We're going to sign them up for the part B and I'm sorry, what they already signed up for part B and it's true. And dad at 90 has been paying part B premiums since he turned 65 for 25 years. He's been paying part B premiums on something he never needed. And that is very frustrating when Robin and I run into that. And unfortunately, it happens, uh, it happens frequently that people don't understand the rules of engagement. They did what their friends told them. They, they, they thought they had to act. No, you didn't. You didn't. That's why we always want to be ahead of the curve. Somewhere between one to three months out from your 65th birth month, that's when you could actually enroll in this Medicare thing. They don't even want to see it farther out. There's too many baby boomers turning 65, no more than 90 days out from your birth month. And you'd go effective the first day of the month in which you turn 65. You missed it. And you sign up in your birth month, the month you've turned 65. We can get you effective the very next month. But this weird initial enrollment period that surrounds your birth month, you got to be careful because then if you trip into these outer months, there can be a delay in when you activate that Part B. It's only a couple of months, but we certainly want to be ahead of the curve and not behind the curve. That's why it's really important to, like I said, have a clubhouse meeting. A and B are going to cover us for different stuff. A has no premium, but B, hello, B does have a premium. The reason they charge a premium is it's the lion's share of which we're going to use on a regular basis. We'll talk about that, but no, the base premium this year, the base premium is $148.50, and that's per person, each, mom and dad. In that situation, they're looking to generate as much income as they possibly can, as much money to run this thing called Medicare, because it's expensive. And what they're doing is they're taking a look at your income. And there's an old adage, we learned this early on, the more you make, the more they take. And this is called IRMA your income-related monthly adjustment amount. We love our acronyms, and we try to make them sound warm and fuzzy. IRMA is based on Maggie. Maggie is your modified adjusted gross income. Understand the government is working um, in a time warp. 
because in 2021, their computers can only show them what you filed for 2020. What you filed in 2020 actually reports what you brought home, what you made in 2019. So it's always a two-year look back, not added together, but looking at calendar year 2019, what did you make as a married couple filing jointly? Well, if you made less than 176 k you pay the base. But beware, as you start to step up here, what you pay for Part B starts to step up. We also will see a very much smaller, but still nonetheless, more money on your drug programs based upon your adjusted gross income. This is critically important. You're making financial decisions at 63, 64, 65. You're going to keep working 66, 60, whatever it is. But these things that you're doing today could have a sonic boom effect farther down the road. You took out a whole bunch of money to, uh, to convert from a, a standard 401k into a Roth. Well, that, that was a financial event. That goes against your gross. You, you sold some stocks at a profit. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to go into this bucket. And you may have never made this kind of money before in your life, but because of those financial things that you did, you could be pushing up into this higher amount. I had a couple not two weeks ago, they're buying a, a, a new condo, their daughter's moving back in with them. It's, it's, it's very nice what they're doing, but they took out money from their 401k to buy the new condo. Okay, I get that. You don't want to pay interest or things. But what they didn't realize was that they took out just enough money out of the 401k that they pushed up to 223. Ouch. Just that move took them from 207 up to 297 on each of them, and they're paying a bigger bump on their D. If they had fully comprehended the actions that they were taking, you've got to kind of have that calculator in your mind. Don't push above these thresholds if you can avoid it because you'll pay more. And I always say, I love my government. I just don't want to give them one more nickel than they're already taking. We talked about A, costs nothing. You paid a fortune in taxes, but they don't charge you more when you come to the party. B does have a premium. But there could be an instance where you don't want to activate A, even if you continue to work. Robin, what would that be? If you're contributing to an HSA, because by virtue of having the ability to do that tax-free, you're in a high deductible health plan. Any part of Medicare would be considered other insurance and it would negate your ability to contribute to that HSA. So just make sure you're timing that right, because when you come to Medicare and it's not during your initial enrollment window around your 65th birthday, let's say you decide to retire at 67, and use a special enrollment to come off of your group coverage. When you go to apply for Medicare, if you hadn't turned on your Part A so you could continue those tax-free contributions to your HSA, just know that your Part A effective date is gonna be retroactive by six months. So you do wanna stop making those HSA contributions about six months ahead of when you're gonna put in your Part A and B application. Good. Good. Um, what we want to talk about here tonight are the different parts of Medicare. A and B going to form the foundation. We're going to see here A and B is really good, but A and B is not complete. Once we have A and B in place, we're going to look to private insurance companies and possibly pick up more coverage. We're certainly going to want to entertain getting a drug program. That's just smart because there could be penalties and lockouts there for sure if you don't take a drug program and you don't have creditable coverage to bridge the gap. We'll take a look at these Advantage programs. Uh, this is a, a, a new, relatively new concept where private insurance companies can step in and literally replace original Medicare. But if we were teaching a college course, we'd spend an hour on each of these. That's not the idea. Tonight, we want to try to keep it simple, make you dangerous. This is one of the handouts that Sue sent out, and this is what we call the Roadmap to Medicare. I like it a lot because it's simple. What we want to try to do here tonight is break this thing down into bite-sized chunks because I know it's overwhelming. We know now that we got to have A and B to do anything else. That's between you and the federal government. We do not help you with that. I mean, we can cheer you on from the sidelines. We can point you in the right direction, but we are not Medicare. We are agents that do all this other stuff. This is where we play. The products that support or potentially replace original Medicare. A and B is good, but A and B is not complete. And once you've got that in place, you would consider picking up additional coverage and that coverage can take two different pathways. One pathway is called original Medicare, A and B in primary position, a drug program and a supplement. 
and those three pieces working in concert supply your medical coverage. Or the other option is the Medicare Advantage pathway, also known as Medicare Part C, brought to us by private insurance companies, literally, that would step in, <clears throat> excuse me, we call these Medicare replacement plans because over here, you're gonna put away your Medicare card and now everything, one card, one company, is all gonna run that show. By definition, both pathways have their positives and their negatives. No one pathway is right for everybody. The beauty of the system is robust competition. Many companies want your business and complete transparency. We can see what all of them are doing. And the best part is you got a new sheriff in town called Medicare. Medicare runs the show. Medicare tells these people how they can provide the coverage. Their job is to compete, find a niche in the market where they can make a profit, but they're always toeing the line and always reporting to Medicare and staying on a very level field of play. A and B really good, but A and B not complete. Let's take a look at that. What are you getting for your 148.50 graded for income? Well, here's part A. If we were gonna talk about part A and gave it one word, simplicity, it's all of the facilities, all the buildings that you're gonna come into contact with in the world of healthcare. Part A has no premium, and I always get a kick out of agents. They'll tell you it's free. It's not free. You paid a boatload in taxes, but they don't charge you more when you come here. But of the world of facilities, no facility could be more important than the, than the hospital. But under Medicare Part A, although there's no premium involved, there's clearly participation on your part. We call that exposure. You go to the hospital, it's not free. You go to skilled nursing, that's rehab or step down. Medicare loves that. They don't have an MRI machine on every floor or an emergency room losing money hand over fist. It's far less expensive. And Medicare says, we like that, but uh, you got to cope. Home health services are wonderful. Hospice, not so much. But these are the areas that Part A is concerned with. A is good, but it has exposure. And that's what this looks like. If all you have is original Medicare, you have exposure. Medicare doesn't cover everything. And you go spend a night in the hospital under original Medicare, you now owe them $1,484 for that first night. That gets scary, but hang on. The $1,484 would actually cover you for up to 60 nights in the hospital. And upon discharge continues to cover you for 60 days. So you go in for your burst appendix, you're in there for two nights. The first night you owe them $1,484, but now you've started your benefit period. Second night, no charge. You go home after two nights, everything's fine. Three weeks later, you got nothing better to do. You decide to have a heart attack and go back into the hospital. Sorry for the heart attack, but glad you did it in the first 60 days because still in your benefit window, they wouldn't charge you the $1,484 again. But note, at day 61, boo, the whole thing resets and you would be facing that 1484 again. Probably wouldn't, never could, but yeah, it does. People time it and they hit it wrong. And you could potentially hit this 1484 several times in a year. I'm not trying to scare you, but I want you to be aware of what you've got and what can we do about it? Well, there's 1484 that's lurking. From the hospital, you could potentially go to skilled nursing. That's rehab or step down. And Medicare loves it. They'll cover you for up to 100 nights. But the way they break that up is the first 20 nights, no charge to you as long as you've had a qualifying hospitalization stay. But those next 80 nights, yeah, they're going to participate with you. But those next 80 nights, they got a co-payment, 185.50 per night for those additional nights, and that can get spendy. Please also understand Medicare does not pay for long-term care. They don't pay for assisted living unless you're on Medicaid, and that's when you, you, you've run out of all of your assets. Medicare is, is good for healthcare, but not for long-term care. If you haven't had that discussion with your financial planner, you probably should. It's at least worth looking at. Home health, wonderful benefit. We'll send a medical professional right to your front door. Their job is to help you get back on your feet, by definition, the home health benefit is very limited. It's major stuff like wound dressing or administration of medications. They're not coming over to mow the lawn or do the dishes. That's what long-term care insurance would pay for. But it would be a very short period of time destined to get you back on your feet out to see doctors where it's less expensive. Hospice, I put down 5%, but that's hardly fair. Medicare, whether you're in a hospice facility 
or even the privacy of your own home. Medicare picks up almost everything, but there can be a very small copayment for the medications you take to remain comfortable before you pass away. A has no premium, but A clearly has exposure if all we have is original Medicare. What about B? Well, B is the world of services. If there's one word for B, let's put down services. So all of the doctors that you see and all of the specialists that you see, whether you saw them in the hospital or in their office, they're billing up under B. There, there might've been an anesthesiologist one time knocked you out so a surgeon could operate on you. Wait a second, that happened in the hospital. Yeah, I know. But that 1484, that's the facility charge. That's the gurney and the bright lights and the operating room. All of your labor charges are coming up under B. All of your lab work, everything from a blood test to a biopsy, all of your diagnostic testing. That's We call that the expensive alphabet soup. EKG, EEG, MRI, CAT scan, x-ray, stress test, mammogram, all going to come up under diagnostic testing and all be billed up under Medicare Part B. Uh, get out of the hospital. Maybe you need a walker or a wheelchair, or maybe you got a brand new knee or a pacemaker. These are all examples of durable medical equipment, your COPD machine, your insulin pump. All of that's going to come up under B. Physical therapy, all those visits, the ambulance that takes you to the emergency room, all of your outpatient services, and that's anything that doesn't have you spending the night in the hospital. If you didn't spend the night, you're not responsible for the 1484, but there's certainly a facility charge. So uh, everything from a colonoscopy to a cataract and everything in between, we actually have seen now they're doing outpatient full knee replacement surgery. It's hard to fathom, but it's true. That's how advanced these things have gotten, but still outpatient fills up under B. And the last part of B is clinical Rx. That's fancy talk. Those are medications delivered in a doctor's office or in a clinical setting, like a, a, some sort of outpatient center. That is typically the god-awful stuff. Chemotherapy, kidney dialysis, radiation treatment, those things, those big ticket items, those are going to come up under B. That's different than the prescriptions that we're going to get for cholesterol from Jewel Osco or high blood pressure from Walgreens. That's going to be part of the Part D component, a different part, not Part B, but the big heavy hitters are under B. A and B structure differently. A kind of has a pay-as-you-go mentality, do this, pay that, do this, pay that. B is different. B has an overall annual deductible. All of these services have a one-time deductible. Once you've met the deductible, then Medicare is going to start sharing costs with you. And that's what this looks like. Your Part B exposure. There's a premium graded for income and there's a deductible. Oh my goodness gracious, a $203 deductible. If you can wrap your mind around that, you're a better man than I am. I'm on this thing they call the Affordable Care Act. I have a $7,000 deductible. 203 is unbelievable. Couldn't find a doctor that charged 203. I don't think you could find a blood panel that retails for under $200. But regardless, in an, any given calendar year, this year, 203, that's your deductible. After that, Medicare steps in and starts splitting bills with you, 80-20. They do the heavy lifting. They pick up 80 cents on the dollar, but they do hold you responsible for 20 cents on the dollar. And if that wasn't good enough, and that's pretty darn good, it's even better because once you've paid your annual deductible, Medicare steps in and they start taking their negotiated discount. If you've ever worked with a loved one or, or somebody that's, that's shown you their explanation of benefits, you'll start to see the power of Medicare. They take a tremendous discount. And it's not unusual. Once you've paid that first doctor visit of 203 and then he wants you to go see a specialist, the cardiologist says, I'm brilliant. I charge 350. Medicare says, you're adorable. We pay 80. Of the 80, you'd be responsible for 20% of that $80 charge. That's $16. And that's how good Medicare is. It's amazing the discount they take. The good news here, it's an unlimited benefit. That's terrific. You need five knee replacements. They're going to pay for five knee replacements. But the bad news is the cautionary tale is that with the unlimited benefit comes unlimited exposure. What does that mean? Well, that means as you go for those knee replacements, every 61 days, the 1484 resets. The skilled nursing could be hitting you at 185.50 a night for additional nights. 
Hospice, I hope you never need it, $203 deductible. Let's not tell anybody under 65 that there's a program where you've got a $203 deductible. They're not going to believe you. But that 20%, that should grab your attention. Unlimited cost sharing. I don't care how big the bill is, they're going to come looking to you for 20% of that number. So although it's really, really good coverage, it's not complete coverage. If you knew what was going on in the world of health insurance out there in the real world, unfortunately, where I am, I pay $1,000 a month to carry a $7,000 deductible. Wrap your mind around that for a moment, because this looks really good to me. And you might be asking yourself, that's pretty amazing. How do they do all that for $148.50 a month? Easy. They don't. The government's dropping north of eight fifty dollars a month on each of us. And in that world, that eight fifty, dollars they ask us for a relatively minor portion of that. If you're under the income threshold of $176K, they want $148.50 per person per month. This is tremendous value. It is incredible. It is phenomenal but it's not complete. And that's why we want to look at this other stuff here tonight. Robin, any questions? Well, I think the one thing to just underscore is that, you know, we talk about unlimited exposure, but what that means, folks, is we're so conditioned coming off of group insurance to having a max out of pocket, a firewall of some sort. In Medicare, you don't have that. And so as David talks through these options for coverage, just know that that's really what you're protecting yourself against. There, there's no firewall on your Medicare benefits. The other thing too, is we often get asked the question about two people on a group plan, one of whom might be reaching Medicare eligible age, but they still have that option for that group coverage and that group plan. And based on what David just outlined related to the costs in Medicare for A and B, I hope you can see that for the 148.50 that you're paying per month, you get a lot of things covered and man, it's hard to beat that 203 deductible on any kind of employer group plan. I don't care how rich it is. So after Medicare takes their negotiated discount and you're on the hook for 20% coinsurance after that, it can be really powerful when you start to use the healthcare system in earnest to see how Medicare may be, not always, but it may be a better value for you, even if you do have the ability to continue on a group plan. So if you decide to break away from employer insurance, um, even if you're going to continue to work because you are now Medicare eligible, um, let's talk a little bit about how you can round out that coverage. Yeah. And, and especially when it's, it's husband and wife, because, you know, you've always been together. You've always been a couple. You've always been on the group health plan. But now, my goodness gracious, Medicare wants to split us up. Yeah, but that can be a good thing. You'll find that in most employer plans, it would, it would be common sense. If he's paying $500 a month for the two of you, it's obvious he's $250 and you're $250, not usual. Usually the employer loves the employee. Of anything that you're paying on an employer plan, usually the employee is about a third of that. And we'll see situations that $500 the husband continues to work. He's paying $150 a month, but yes, he's bringing the wife along. She's $350 and she's Medicare eligible and we can break her off and we can move her into this world. That can, that can present opportunities for significant improvement in the coverage and for less money. I understand we're conditioned. We've always been with the employer plan. We're going to stay with you. Not necessarily. This is someplace where you need to start asking some questions. Two different worlds, the under 65 world and the over 65 world. One of the major changes is that now you go individually. The other major change is if you're on this side of the equation using original Medicare, you need to revamp your thinking. Under 65, you have a health insurance. And boy, if it's Blue Cross or Aetna or Humana or United Healthcare, you got to stay within their network because if you go outside their network, you're going to get clobbered for out of network charges. People come to Medicare, they want to make sure that they get a PPO, they want to be able to choose their doctor. And I would tell you one of the beautiful parts of Medicare. It's the largest PPO that you can get your hands on. It's any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the United States, they take Medicare, you're in. I don't care how good your network is with your employer, Medicare is going to blow that away because it is so huge and it's nationwide. In this world, a new world, Medicare goes into primary position. Medicare is your coverage. Great. 
but not complete. So we're gonna add some action accessories, which are sold separately. The first thing we'd wanna look at is, what are we gonna do about all that exposure with A and B? Well, that, that could be a lot of money, I understand. We're gonna to look to pick up a Medicare supplement. A supplement is a package of benefits that's going to stand in support of your primary coverage. Supplements, supplement original Medicare, or if you prefer the term, filling in the gaps, that stuff we talked about that Medicare doesn't cover. This is where private insurance companies can offer you products, but they can only offer you the products that Medicare has approved. Your new best friend in the world has outlined a field of play and all the companies that want your business, they have to play on that field of play. Medicare has designed it and it looks a lot like this. This is where it can start to go a little sideways on you. I had that whole A and B thing, I'm with you so far, good but not complete, but what the heck is this? Well, here, benefits. This is what we just talked about, what A and B cover. But now Medicare allows 10 different packages of benefits to compete for your business. Right now, currently, we've got 38 companies that want your business selling these products. But understand what's going on here. Medicare says what each package represents. And understand, this is where it's customizable. Did you want the penthouse or were you okay with the pup tent? Somewhere in between. These packages that have been designed by Medicare can be lavishly over the top with their coverage, or they can be more Spartan. But this depends on your situation, which could be different from your wife's situation, which is clearly different from your neighbor, your brother-in-law, and the other guy at work that all want to tell you what to do. But understand here, if you look at the big three, let's try to simplify it. Let's look at the big standard three that have driven this market for years. F and G and N, a good cross-section to show us what Medicare allows to come to market. But for example, if you were to look at G as in Gary, understand that G is a package of benefits that Medicare has designed that, not the insurance company. Wait a second. You're telling me that G from Blue Cross Blue Shield is similar to G from Mutual of Omaha? Nope. It's identical. Medicare says what G is, not the insurance companies. Yeah, but hang on a second. My whole life I've been with Blue Cross Blue Shield. I know my doctor takes Blue Cross Blue Shield. Does my doctor even take Mutual of Omaha? No, sir. Does your doctor take original Medicare? That's your question. And the beauty of the system is Medicare forces all the companies onto a level field of play. We've got robust competition. We've got complete transparency. We can see what everybody's doing. This leads to something called capitalism. They're all beating each other over the head to win your business. But when you look at G or N, you're going to see packages that are identical, but they would be different from a pricing standpoint. They'd certainly be different from a credibility standpoint, from a, from a financial backing a track record, history of rate increases. Uh, definitely in this world, we prefer to be with the big companies that have huge risk pools. Why is that? Because they have more minimum uh, rate increases each year. These things will go up a little bit each year, but certainly the bigger companies have the better track record. And we can show you that. We can show you all 38 companies, but understand the Medicare rules of engagement. You guys want to sell these things? Great. But you're going to do three major things. One, when you activate Part B, and that could be uh, uh, at 68 or maybe hopefully it was at 90. You activate your Part B. All of the companies that offer these things, they got to offer you the coverage. No pre-existing conditions, no riders, no waivers, nothing. I have people all the time turning 65 and they want to talk about pre-existing conditions. And I'm not trying to be cruel. I know that's important. It's in a consideration, but it's, it's irrelevant when it comes to Medicare because when you first activate B, You've got six months before you activate B, six months after you activate B. We call that your golden ticket. Go anywhere you want to go. They got to take you. That's rule number one. No underwriting, no pre-existing conditions, no waivers. Day one, you're covered. Rule number two, they can never drop you. You're theirs and they're yours till the day you die. Or if you stop paying your premiums, that wouldn't be too smart because then they do have the right to drop you. But in a world where you can rest assured that you're guaranteed issue and you can never be dropped, you have all the power in the relationship. Medicare assures you of that. You can drop them at any time, but they can never drop you. And maybe if we find a better alternative further down the road, 
we will make that move, but you're protected and you're safe. And the third rule, which is probably the most important of the bunch, you can never be singled out for a rate increase. That means that you have a terrible year. First diagnosis, dread disease, uh, fall off a roof, snake bite, car wreck, stroke out, all in the same year. They can't come to you and say, you were really expensive. No. If you've got N from AARP, you go into a pool with everyone that's got N from AARP in the Chicagoland area. They can't single you out for a rate increase. They can only share your claims among everyone that's got N from AARP in the Chicagoland area. These risk pools are critically important because the larger the pool, the more modest the rate increases because they're sharing claims over a big group of people. Common mistake here is people will, you know, there's an old adage, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Well, I figured it out. G is G, no matter who I get it from. And the network is Medicare. So that's the same thing. And on these supplements, they're all doing the same thing. I'll just, I'll bottom surf online and I'll find the cheapest company that offers the G supplement because what's the worst case scenario? If something goes wrong, I can always change it every year, guaranteed during this annual election period, right? Wrong. With the supplements, it's a different timing structure. You've got six months before you activate B, six months after you activate B, go anywhere you want to go. Got to take you, can't drop you, can't single you out for a rate increase. But after that window closes, six months out from activating Part B, we now can change these every month of the year. That's terrific. Yeah, but wait a second. To change now, you're going to have to answer medical questions. Now, pre-existing does become an issue. Now, we do have to be careful about the fact that maybe these companies wouldn't want to buy problems. You're pending a, a heart surgery. They're not going to want to pick you up. But in Illinois, uh, we don't have a lot of blessings in Illinois, but we do have one. 38 Medicare supplement companies that want your business all duking it out on a level field of play. If you want to change, 37 out of 38 are going to ask you medical questions. But we do have a company in Illinois. It's a blessing to us as brokers that does not ask medical questions. It gives us flexibility. I've got an 84-year-old with emphysema that I'm working with right now. No insurance company would take that person with the exception of the one here in Illinois that doesn't ask medical questions. It gives us a level of flexibility that's wonderful. A limited window of opportunity. Be sure that when you're looking at these things, like I said, we like to go with companies. I assure you, you've heard of them before. When someone is pitching you on an insurance company and you're saying to yourself, I've never heard of them before, that's a red flag. Look at their financial wherewithal. The companies that we like to do business with, A, A plus. The companies that have the lowest price in the marketplace, B, B minus, C plus plus. I'm not hitching my wagon to a B minus company and expecting them to be there in 20 years to pay claims. But truth be told, those companies do us a great favor in the world of capitalism because they are lowballing the market. They're trying to capture market share by people who are going for the lowest price in the market. But that forces the big guys to actually lower their rates. And that's a beautiful thing. We see here three different packages of benefits. F for years was the most popular because it was the easiest to understand. With F, it was a package of benefits where as long as you fill out that check every month and mail it in, F picked up all of that exposure. The 1484, the 185, the 5%. F even paid the 203. It was crazy good. And for years we've joked, F, unlike any coverage you've ever had before in your life, unless you were a member of Congress at one point in time. But the problem with F, if you, if you took some time to look at it, you would have found for years now, G has been the better value. Agents have loved to sell F, one, because it's simplistic, it's easy to understand, but also understand agents were compensated for your enrollment. There's never a charge to work with us, but what you do is the insurance company pays the agent a commission. Well, if they can get you to buy the most expensive thing, they make a higher commission. And I assure you, there's an awful lot of people out there running around that have F to this day and don't realize the mistake they've made. We realized it years ago. I've taken great pleasure for 15 years just beating up on F because G was always the better value. G that does almost everything F does. Wait a second. There's an empty box there. What is that? Well, F pays for it. I know, but you're going to pay for it here. What is it? It's the Part B deductible. You said that's $203.
So if you had this printed out, I'd want you to put 203 right there, and you'd find that 203 was your exposure for the year. Once you paid that deductible, G picks up everything 100%. It's almost the mirror image of F with the exception of the deductible. But what do we know about deductibles? You see it in your car insurance. You see it in your homeowners. The higher the deductible, the lower the premium. So what's that intersection? Well, 38 companies that offer these products, 38 companies offering F, offering G, if you looked at the difference between those premiums, you'd find pretty quickly the G is generally speaking in years gone by about $50 less per month. Many companies want your business. That's a number that's a ballpark, but it's a good ballpark. So with the G, because you picked up the deductible, you pay less in premiums or flip it. Understand that with F, you're paying about $600 more per year for than you would be with the G. And what are you getting for your $600? They're paying the $200. That's not a good deal. And after years and years of, of beating up on it, even the government now agrees. And F is no longer marketed to new enrollees. If you turn 65 after the age, after January 1st of 2020, you can't even get the F. You know why? Because the government agrees it's been a ripoff. And F, I, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but we, we typically say F is for foolish. If you've got F now, we should really be looking at moving you into the G. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at the money that you can save. And your friends, I promise you, your friends are going to tell you, oh, you got to get F. We've got F. We never see a bill. I know, but the reason they never see a bill is there's a giant sucking sound coming out of their checking account every month to finance the F. And people can be very adamant about loving it until you have to kind of go through the side door and ask them, well, if you've got the F supplement, then you must carry a zero deductible on your automobile insurance, right? And they'll look at you like you got three heads. Are you kidding? Do you know how expensive that would be to carry a zero deductible on my automobile insurance? Yeah, I do. But that's what you did with your supplement this is a good time to at least consider looking at the alternative of G, it's better value, because you pick up a deductible, you drive premiums down. Well, maybe my health is good. Maybe, I, maybe I'm a little bit more adventurous than that. And, and, I, and I realize that by digging deeper into my pocket, I could even drive my premiums down further. Let's look at N. N grows in popularity, I think to a large degree, because it mimics what most people have coming off their group health insurance. N says you'll pay a deductible, and in addition to that, down here at the bottom, we see you've got doctor co-payments. So after you pay that 203, that's your first doctor visit, additional doctor visits are 20 bucks for a primary, 20 bucks for a specialist, and $50 if you go to the emergency room. That's pretty negligible. And if you look at N, you would assume, and you'd be correct, that's going to drive premiums down even further. This is a place where we really want a rational assessment of your needs, not panic-struck, high-pressure sales, trying to get you to buy more insurance than you need. This N, again, 38 companies offering N. They all want your business. If you looked at the average price difference between most Gs and most Ns, it's probably going to be close to $25 a month. I save $25 a month by going with N. Let's see, $25 a month. That's $300 a year that I'm saving by being in N, but that's not fair. I've got Dr. Co payments on N that I don't have on G. I agree, but let's think about this for a second. With $300 in saved premiums, N can make perfect sense as long as you're not going to the doctor more than 15 times a year. Most people aren't going to the doctor 15 times a year. It's worth looking at. But maybe, just maybe, you want to go even further. You want to have a higher out-of-pocket to drive premiums down even further. We got that. This G comes in two flavors. Standard G says pay the 203 and then walk on everything else. High deductible G says, wait a second, I'd be willing to expose myself to a higher out-of-pocket in return for lower premiums. And G comes in what they call high deductible G. And you got to understand insurance terminology. A deductible is where you pay everything up to the deductible, and after that, you're covered. But this high deductible G is actually misnamed because the $2,370 that you'd be willing to expose yourself to is not really a deductible. It's a maximum out of pocket. And what that means is you're paying towards that number with your doctor visits, your $203 deductible, 
all of the services that you're utilizing, but you're getting the Medicare negotiated discount. Not enough agents talk about this as an option, but it's a brilliant option. I'd love to show you how it works when you understand that many baby boomers like myself been carrying a $7,000 deductible. I got to get to 7,001 before I get a nickel out of the insurance company. Here, I'm paying towards a firewall of 2,370. Understand this, no deductible, deductible. The premium comes down, deductible and co-payments. Premium comes down again, higher out of pocket. The premium comes down even further. This number, this 2,370, Remember it, because the digging into your pocket, the deeper you dig into your pocket, that's going to drive premiums down. And that's going to be the key to understanding these things called advantage programs. We'll be there in a second. Robin, you got questions? Well, I think the one most common misunderstanding about supplements is that you can only change them during the annual enrollment period. Not true. They're month-to-month -month policies, so you can change them in any month out of the year. However, if you want to move between plans, even with the same company, and you're out of that six-month window upon activating Part B, you're going to get asked questions about your health. If you're moving between companies, even if it's in, during the annual enrollment period, you're going to get asked questions about your health if you're past that six-month window. We only have one company in Illinois that never asks health questions when you're choosing among these supplement products. So as David mentioned, I, I can't underscore enough. You certainly wanna be looking at price, track record in the business, fi financial ratings of, of A or higher and modest rate increases year over year. We tell our clients budget on average five to 8%. Now that doesn't mean you might not see 10% one year and 3% the other, but on average, if you're falling in that ballpark of premium increases, you're doing okay. So you really want to decide right out of the gates, how much coverage do I really want? Yes, what is your tolerance for risk? But as David pointed out, how often are you really seeing the doctor? You know, do you need the G plan or could you could N be a better value for you long term? So that's something that you need to decide. You know, we can help guide you toward good companies with a good reputation in the business, but you really do need to look at um, your specific situation when you're evaluating these plans. Yeah. And, and between husband and wife, it's not unusual that, you know, maybe mom has uh, fears and, and the what if chromosome in that world, then you, you couldn't have a better sleeping pill than G standard G pay the 203 and, and all those skeletons in the closet, they shut up because you know, you're fully protected dad. He might be happy with the end. He might even be thinking about this high deductible option. Uh, it, it, it's, it's discernible and individual for each person. The one thing we do want to keep in mind is that these companies that offer these supplements, most of them are going to offer a household discount. And that could save you another three or five or even 7% by both signing up with the same company. The beauty of this field of play is robust competition and complete transparency. We've seen companies that didn't used to offer any discount for a family. Now they do because they have to be competitive with the other companies in the marketplace. We just had a, a very major ripple in our world. Not three months ago, we had one of the major players on this field of play. They went from a 7% discount to a 12% discount. And it's going to be really fun to see how everyone else responds. Everyone else has said, you'll get the discount as soon as the spouse signs up and together you're active with our company, then we'll give you the household discount. This other company now goes 12% if you simply live with somebody that's over 60 years of age. It's pretty impressive and it's beautiful because it's going to force everyone else to adjust their rates and become more competitive. Mom and dad might have different needs. Mom and dad would possibly like different Medicare supplement companies, but certainly we'd like to keep them with the same company, get that household discount. We still would want a drug program. And again, the new sheriff in town is Medicare, and they're going to run the show, and they're going to say what the parameters are of a Part D drug program, whether you do it individually here as part of three parts of your Medicare, original Medicare pathway, or it's here combined, all wrapped into up to a single product from a single company, all the D programs have the similar parameters of engagement. One, you don't have to take a drug program. They're not going to force you to take a drug program, but if you don't, the government doesn't forget about you. 
and there is a late enrollment penalty that just starts ticking away. They'll wait. They got no worries about it. We'd sure like you in the program. We'd love you paying premiums for a program. Even if you're not taking any drugs, then we really like you because you're paying premiums and helping keep costs down for the entire risk pool. That's a beautiful thing. And many people in years gone by, they were flummoxed because I'm not going to take a drug program. I don't take anything. Even if I ever took anything, it would be generic. I'll pass. Okay. But that's kind of penny wise and pound foolish. And the years roll by and inevitably the doctor shows up and usually the two major offenders these days are called Xarelto or Eliquis. These are brilliant blood thinners, but they're very expensive. And all of a sudden, the guy that was never taking any meds or anything he was going to take was going to be a generic. You're confronted with this brilliant miracle drug that's about $500 a month. And all of a sudden, you see the light and you decide that you want to go get a drug program. That's cool. We got you. Medicare is going to protect you. We can get you into a drug program even if you didn't have one. Every year during this annual election period, we can get you into a drug program. And that Eliquis may wind up running you 30, 40 bucks a month. That's fabulous. I want a drug program. Yeah, but they didn't forget about you. And when you sign up for that drug program, understand not only will you be paying the premium on the drug program, but they're going to take all of those months that you didn't have a drug program. This year, I want to say the, the penalty is like 38 cents a month. It's not a big deal. Yeah, but 38 cents a month is darn near $5 per year. And I've got people that wait years and years and finally see the light, go to get a drug program, and they're stunned and amazed. Uh, the woman I'm working with, her daughter right now, the, the mother is 90. She hasn't had a drug program since they first came out. The drug programs first came out in 2006. So that's 15 years of penalties, about $5 per year. That $75 penalty is not a one-timer. That's an every month for the rest of her life. And people get very upset, but that's because they didn't make fully informed decisions. And I understood it. Back when these drug programs first hit the market, they were all 45, 50 bucks. And that's a lot of money to pay when you're not taking any medications. But through the years, competition has driven these prices down. We currently have 29 standalone drug programs. We'll see the new programs uh, a week from Friday, October 1st. We get to see everything for 2022. I would hope there would be more than 29 programs. But they're all clubbing each other over the head. And through the years, we've seen 50 drop below 40, drop below 30. It was not even five years ago, we had a drug program that was under $20 a month, Yahoo. Three years ago, we went under $15 a month for a drug program. Come on, you can't be that foolish to pass on that. Until this year, we have a drug program now at $7.30 a month. And that's just, to me, that's foolishness. Uh, the cornerstone of insurance is we always like to say, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So for $7.30, you could avoid the penalty. You've got something there. It's just we see far too many people who get caught halfway through the year with the pants down, and now they got to start getting Eliquis or Xarelto or some other expensive drug, and they've got no coverage. And boy, even when you check at goodrx.com, I'm going to see that it's still $500. Yeah, some of these brand name drugs can get spendy. Avoid the penalty, get a drug program. You can do that innocently enough. All of the drug programs this year, there's 29 of them on a standalone basis. They all have to choose what they offer from the master menu of drugs, the master formulary that Medicare allows to come to market. Different companies, I know this sounds repetitive, different companies will treat different drugs differently. Some companies may have your drug very inexpensively. Another may have it as a more expensive co-payment, but all of them are using a five-tier method of, of, of rating these meds. You might remember your employer plan, that was three tiers, right? They had generic, they had brand, and they had specialty. Well, here, Medicare breaks it up into five tiers to force even more specialization, even more competition. You may find one drug program has your med as a tier three. A different drug program may have it as a tier four. A different one may not cover it at all. But understand, tier one generics are going to carry the lowest copayment. Tier two, that's going to be newer generics. That's going to have a slightly higher copayment because it's a more expensive drug. Tier three drugs, these are drugs that are advertised on TV. Tier four, these are drugs that are advertised on TV by famous people. Phil Mickelson's getting his, his cut of the, of the deal. 
Tier five drugs, these are the things you don't even want to consider. They're brutally expensive. AIDS medications, anti-rejection drugs for transplants, chemotherapy that you might take in the privacy of your own home. You might take it in the privacy of your own home, or you might remember that Part B covers us for clinical medications. Could I have the chemotherapy delivered in an outpatient setting and not run it through my drug program? Yeah, you might be able to do that if you make a fully informed decision with your doctor. But why would I do that? Because the medication of chemotherapy that you take in the privacy of your own home is brutally expensive. The drug program will shield you from it somewhat, but it's still going to find out to be a very expensive drug. And, and why the retail value, not your copayment, but the retail value of your meds is so important is all drug programs, whether they're on the Advantage chassis or here on a standalone basis, are going to have three stages of coverage. And those stages propel you through different co-payments in the course of a year. Most, most drug programs are going to have an annual deductible. Well, that, that, that's interesting. The, the $7.30 drug program certainly has a $445 deductible. That's pretty standard for the industry this year. That, that most expensive drug program this year is $147 a month. Well, as you might imagine, the $7 drug program is really good for generics, the $147 program is for god-awful stuff, but that may represent value for someone. The $7.30 drug program has a deductible. The $147 drug program doesn't, but that's because it's $147 a month. Most programs, if you're going to go get your Eliquis or your Xarelto and you're in the $7 drug program, you're going to pay that first one off. You're going to pay the $445 annual deductible off with that first med. But after that, that is going to come way down because you'll be in your initial stage of coverage. And you could, depending on the drug program, you could be paying as little as 30 bucks a month for Eliquis. That's terrific. But understand, they're not tracking what you spend. They're tracking the retail value, the total value of that drug is what they're using to propel you through these stages of coverage. And if you're in the initial stage of coverage, and you receive this calendar year more than $4,130 worth of drugs. That's what propels you from the initial stage of coverage into this thing called the coverage gap or the donut hole. And that's where your responsibility is heavy because now you need to step up and you're still supported, but now your co-payments will increase likely because now you're picking up 25% of the retail value of the drug. So in the initial stage of coverage, let's say you're paying $30 for your Eliquis, but that's a $500 drug. In less than, or in just about eight months, you're gonna pass through this threshold. And now that $500 drug isn't $30 anymore. Now it's 25% of 500, that's 125 bucks a month. That will take you by surprise if you don't see it coming. Robin and I get these calls this time of year quite frequently. Uh, my neighbor said I should talk to you. you. You know everything about Medicare. Okay, well, what's going on? Well, every month I've been going to Walgreens and I paid $87 for my meds. And I just went down to pick up my meds and they want $436. I said, well, I don't know. I, I didn't sell you the program, but it sounds to me like you've fallen into the coverage gap. And they'll say, I can't have fallen in the coverage gap. I've only spent 800 bucks. No, sir, it's not what you've spent. It's the retail value of the medications that you've received. And that's a light bulb moment. And you realize that they didn't make a fully informed decision. That's very frustrating. Get into jail, get into the coverage gap that happens at a retail value of 4,130. You can get out of the coverage gap. It's expensive. That will put you into the catastrophic stage where your co-payments will drop significantly. But the irony of this story is usually Anybody that falls into the coverage gap, usually around September, October is when we really see people get hit. And this drug program resets every year, calendar year, January 1, we're going to wipe the slate clean and we're going to start all over again. So you got 28, or currently you got 29 different programs, 29 different formularies, 29 different price points covering different stuff. And it's pretty simple. All you need to do during this annual election period is call those 29 companies and spend about an hour. No, you're not going to do that. We're going to go to Medicare.gov, G-O-V, and we're going to go to find health and drug programs, and we're going to enter your meds in, and the federal government is going to direct us as to your best value.
Here's a guy we ran at the beginning of the year. Uh, this program was $25 a month. They're all over the board pricing wise, but what we're looking for is the best possible over the year cost of what you're going to pay with premiums and co-payments. This drug program has a preferred pharmacy. No, they all have preferred pharmacies and you need to know who your preferred pharmacy is. It's where you get the best value. There's 29 drug programs and they all have different strategic alliances with different retailers. Mail order always used to be your best option, not so much anymore. Now we find that mail order has been superseded by all of these retailers wanna get you in the store. They'll undercut mail order. They know you can't go into Mariano's and not walk through the deli. That's dangerous because there's always something good to buy there. In here, you'd see people that say, well, I only want to go to Walgreens. That's fine. We can run the report and you're only going to put in Walgreens. But why would you look at only the eight companies that offer the preferred pharmacy of Walgreens? You should be looking at all 29 drug programs and understand that possibly by walking across the street to Jewel Osco, you could save $700 a year. Yeah, but they don't do that. And people will choose the right drug program and go to the wrong retailer. That's wrong. We want the intersection of what are you taking and where would you be willing to go get it? This guy here, let's see, atorvastatin. He's got to pay off his deductible first because this one has a $445 deductible. You're going to buy that off the first month because there's the dreaded Eliquis. $496 retail, atorvastatin, yeah, but after the deductible, he pays zero for the atorvastatin, zero for the lisinopril, but yeah, there's the Eliquis, but still 30 bucks for a $500 drug, that's pretty sweet, yeah, but he's going to hit the coverage gap in August. You can see the report here, you can see what you're learning and how important it is, and once he hits that coverage gap, yeah, he falls into the gap, now he's paying close to $125 a month for the Eliquis. Here's Ventolin, that's an inhaler, and this is a good example of running a reality check. We always want to make sure when we're looking at expensive drugs, it would behoove you if you're not hip to goodrx.com. I'm not shilling for goodrx. There's a number of companies that do this, but it's a website that just shows you every one of the drug uh, retailers, all the, all the pharmacies, and what they would charge if you didn't even run it through your drug program. Some meds, you may decide, for example, this Ventolin now has gone generic. Last time I checked it, I want to say at GoodRx, I think you can get it at GoodRx with their coupon for $18. Well, I don't need to be paying $58 towards the deductible, and I certainly don't need to be paying $30 bucks for it if I can get it for less. And here, you don't have to do any of this. Just keep filling out the checks and mailing them in. But that's not our speed. What I want to know is that I'm getting value. I know that nothing here is cheap. Everything here is going to have cost money and, and probably be fairly expensive. But what I want to make sure is I'm getting the best value for my dollar. And that's where we need a little bit of participation from the public just to make sure that we're doing the right thing at the right time. Robin, what do you got? Um, not much. So I think either you're doing a really good job or everyone's fairly overwhelmed. I, I do put some commentary in the chat um, about this, folks, because it, it is the most volatile part of Medicare. And gosh, it causes people a lot of confusion. Um, just know that if you currently are taking some brand name drugs and you've been able to avail yourself of manufacturer's discounts, those often will go away. You won't qualify for them once you're in Medicare. And so there are extra help programs and other things that you can pursue to help with prescription drug costs. But this is a place in Medicare that David and I see people really overspend because they'll make one decision when they turn 65 and then they'll stick this policy in a kitchen drawer and never look at it again. And gosh, if, if your meds don't change, something on your list is probably going from brand to generic status or the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical industry or the retail pharmacy partners are changing up their deals. And so it is definitely worth a revisit, maybe not every year if you're if things are pretty steady for you from a prescription medication perspective, but certainly, you know, in year five, six, seven, you definitely want to be looking at this. It's low hanging fruit where you can potentially tweak your coverage and save some money, but you certainly want to be researching your plans against your specific medication list. It, it, we see this happen all the time where someone will go to an insurance company, pick up their supplement, and then just buy their drug plan along with it. And there's no benefit to you to do that 
Um, there, there's no discount that you're getting, um, but certainly you're only giving yourself a very limited option um, for, for different drug plans that could potentially um, fit your prescription medications at any given point in time. And so this is definitely worth the, the extra effort. Yeah, people will stare at the supplement for quite a long time because the supplement can easily be $100, $150. They'll blow right past the drug program, and the drug program is the one that can really chew you up because of the cost of pharmaceuticals. And, and Robin touched on it. You, you In this world, what we try to do is we want to find the best supplement for you, and then we want to find the best drug program for you, which could be different than the best drug program for your wife. We want to take advantage of the household discount for the supplement, but then we want the best drug programs and put all that together in a package. Not to say it can't happen, but usually that will come from different players because everyone's got a niche in the market. This is the time of year, and Robin touched on it. Usually people are happy on autopilot for a while, but eventually the increases on the supplement and the potential increases on the drug program, they're going to grab your attention. And we work with a lot of people who, as Robin said earlier, they think they can only change the supplement this time of year, and it motivates you. And sure, all the commercials on TV screaming about the big changes to Medicare, that's just hoopla, but it does light a fire. And we'll get a lot of people through our doors here in Lyle that want a checkup, and that's just smart. And you find out that they did the drug program and the supplement with the same company. And that's usually a dead giveaway that they didn't work with a broker. They worked with a captive agent, an agent that only represented one company. And that's a mistake because you're not looking at 38 supplemental companies. You're looking at that one company. You're not looking at 29 drug programs. You're getting shoehorned into whatever they tell you is the best program from that company. But there could be 27 that were less expensive overall. You want to take advantage of the competition and the fierce capitalism in this world. And we'll take a look and, and maybe uh, far too many people that we work with still have F. It's, it's hard for me to fathom, but they do. They've got the F supplement and, and they've got the drug program that the least expensive drug program for that particular company was $31 a month. But it turns out the better drug program for you was from a different company. It was $14 a month. You want a checkup. You want a reality check. You want to know that you're doing the best possible thing. And that usually starts with dad sitting at the kitchen table. He's got a, a legal pad and the calculator. And he's looking at this stuff at 72 or 73 or 74. Robin told you these things go up a little bit each year. And I'll be darned if he doesn't say, you know, honey, um, it all looked really good when we started. But now between my supplement and, and my drug program, we're dropping close to 250 a month. And between your supplement and your drug program, we're dropping another 250 a month. And Lord knows that's six grand a year. And as far as I can tell from these outlines of coverage and benefits that I, we went to the total, the doctor a total of five times this year. Are you really getting value paying $6,000 for five doctor visits? Well, maybe they didn't need the F and we could change the drug program and we can tune it up and save them quite literally a couple hundred bucks a month. That's a beautiful feeling. Everyone goes home happy, but then they watch TV and they hear Joe Namath hawking on these things called Medicare Advantage programs. And you want to know about those. It's a valid opportunity for a different kind of coverage. Flash back with me real quickly. Remember the supplements, no deductible price, deductible, lower price, deductible and co-payments, lower price, higher out of pocket, high deductible, G, even a lower price. Well, that's an interesting way to drive down premiums. And we can do that in the supplements. But on the Advantage program, they ask for even more cost sharing. And that's what Advantage does. Over on the supplemental side, that company, that, that, that couple, they're paying six grand a year, but they know with their F for six grand a year, five knee replacements, they never see a bill. Yeah, but they're paying six grand a year and they're not getting five knee replacements. But essentially, the Medicare supplement could be the equivalent of the all you can eat buffet. Pay the premium, go do everything on the G. What do you got? A $203 deductible after that, everything's covered. Advantage is different. Advantage says a private insurance company is going to step in and literally replace the three parts you've got over here, Medicare primary, a supplement, and a drug program working in concert. Advantage says, thank you very much. We'll run the whole show. 
the government says, well, we would enjoy if you did that and we'll actually pay you to run these people and their health care. Remember, we said Medicare is not running Medicare for your 148.50. They're dropping darn near 850 a month on each of us. They take that and send a large portion of it to a private insurance company. And that insurance company says, OK, we'll run their health insurance. But on an advantage chassis, they agree to stay within our network. So it's a little bit more restrictive. And they're going to have co-payments for services. That's not a bad thing, but those co-payments for services and network restrictions combine into this Medicare Part C concept, which they're advertising. And truth be told, they can be zero premium plans. That couple is not going to pay $6,000 this year for their D and their supplement. What they're going to do if they listen to us, they're going to put that in the cookie jar because if they want to try an advantage program, they need to understand the rules of engagement. And the Advantage program can have higher out-of-pocket exposure, potentially, depending on the program and depending on what they're paying over here. But all the Advantage programs got to play by Medicare rules. And Medicare says, here we go, guys. You want to sell these things? You need to understand as the consumer that they will be more restrictive in where you can go and who you can see. If the world of Medicare is this big, it, in an Advantage program, it's going to be a smaller subset. It's going to be m smaller selection than what you get with, with, with Medicare, original Medicare. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but understand the concept of, of Advantage. You're giving to get. Now, those restrictions can be quite severe. It could be an HMO chassis. HMO says you keep everything within a single medical group. That could be DuPage Medical Group or, or Advocate or Northwestern, but that Northwestern primary is only going to refer you to the Northwestern Derm, the Northwestern Gastro, the Northwestern uh, Endocrinologist. That's an HMO, keeping it all within a single group of doctors. Now, as you might imagine, the more restrictive the network, well, they're, they're certainly going to have benefits to that. Lower co-payments, lower out-of-pocket maximum some sweeteners that they're going to throw in there. But these things have become so popular now that they even offer them in a PPO version. So you could have a doctorate advocate, a different doctorate DuPage Medical Group, a different doctorate Northwestern. But anytime the insurance company does more, rest assured, they're making it up somewhere. You still have the potential to have a zero premium PPO. But that zero premium PPO, because they're doing more, expect slightly higher co-payments, higher out of pocket, they're going to make it up someplace, but all of the advantage programs are going to have more restrictive networks of one sort or another. All of them are going to have co-payments for services. I get angry when I see the TV commercial that says zero co-pays. Okay, wait a second. Zero co-pays for your flu shot, zero co-pays very possibly to see the primary care physician, but don't be lured into the fact that everything is a zero copay. Mama didn't raise no fool. You don't get something for nothing. In the world of Advantage, you would have a copayment to see the specialist, a copayment to go to the emergency room, a copayment if you took the ambulance, and a copayment if you spent the night in the hospital. That's not a bad thing, but we need to understand that there are copayments for services. And among the different companies, there will be different levels of copayments, there will be different networks. All of them are going to feature capped exposure, and that's fancy talk for what Robin called a firewall. Remember, we talked about original Medicare, good but not complete, unlimited benefit, but unlimited exposure. Well, at least with the Advantage program, you would have put in a firewall. As you might imagine, on the HMO, it's a lower out-of-pocket. On the PPO, it's a higher out-of-pocket. But we need to know these numbers. I had a, a client in here not a month ago. He moved his mom, who was, I believe, 87 at the time, moved her from her supplement and her drug program because it was really expensive. I get that. He moved her into a zero premium PPO. He couldn't have been happier. She's saving a fortune every month until she starts going to the doctor. He didn't realize that that Advantage program that he chose has a $7,500 out-of-pocket maximum. I thought he was going to choke right on the table when he realized what he had done turned out to not be such a smart idea. But Medicare protects you. Your new best friend in the world says, look, if you're over here and you think you might be interested, intrigued by this advantage idea, he was in, she was in, his mom was in what we call the trial right period. 
First time she'd ever been in a Medicare Advantage program, you get a one-year trial right. If for any reason you figure out that maybe this wasn't what you thought it was, or you didn't make a fully informed decision, or you just turn out that you don't like it, Medicare protects you. They say any time in that first year you don't like it, we'll move you right back to what you left, guaranteed, can't be denied, no medical questions, there you go. So you've got the ability to test drive advantage if you thought it might be of interest and Medicare protects you. All of the programs are gonna have capped exposure. That's a critical number to look at. Most of them are gonna include a Part D drug prescription, prescription program. And this is where they can lure people in because they will have sweeter drug programs sometimes than what you can get on the standalone basis because boy, they sure would love to get your business and get you in here, get that money each month from the government and have you enrolled in their program. They've already built the hotel. They just wanna fill it with as many people as possible. But this drug program option in the Advantage programs, sometimes you can find certain medications that are treated more favorably. You'd certainly wanna look at that and understand. And know that every year they're offered during the annual election period. That's what we're coming up on. If you decided you might wanna move from a supplement and a drug program, try the Advantage program. Going this way, there's never any questions. Very easy to make a move into Advantage. They'll take you with open arms. You've got a one-year trial right. That's beautiful. You get to take it for a test drive. And if you like it, it's just going to roll over. And for that couple that was going to drop six grand, whether they went to the doctor or not, they go to the Advantage chassis, he went to the primary a couple of times, so did she. He had that MRI because they were concerned about what the cardiologist had to say. She cut her finger carving the turkey. But still, all of those copayments for all of those services would be far less than the six grand they were guaranteed to pay here, whether they went to the doctor or not. These are not something that you buy for the shiny objects that they're advertising, dental, vision, and hearing, and more. Get all the benefits you're entitled to. Spare me. Those are additional benefits. Why do we buy insurance if something goes wrong? Now, that being said, Advantage has become big business and they are sweetening the pot. There can be dental and vision and hearing, but boy, let's go through those details very specifically. Don't be hoodwinked into calling an 800 number for some guy that's sitting at a, at a phone bank in Florida, just knocking them down because it's a zero premium plan. This needs to be really well thought out. It can be a very good move, but it's something where we want to go through page seven and page eight and make sure you understand all the parameters of engagement. Don't be the guy that signed up his mom only to find out after the fact that there was a huge backside potential exposure. That's why Robin and I, we do advantage, we like advantage, but we're very circumspect. It's got to be the right fit because understand you come here. The first year, you don't like it, no problem, we can get you out. But after that first year, if you want to come back over to Original Medicare, certainly we can put A and B back into place. You've got your choice of every drug program guaranteed, and you can go ahead and apply for a supplement. I'm sorry, what was that? You could go ahead and apply for a supplement. Yeah, but wait a second, you said there's medical questions. There are. And people don't understand that they might have made the move to Advantage, and forsake their ability to get back to original Medicare. But in Illinois, Robin, we have a blessing, don't we? We do. We have one insurance company that doesn't ask health questions on the Medigap side. <laughs> that, gives us the, that gives us the confidence of knowing moving to Advantage can be a really smart thing to try, see if it's a good fit. But by the same token, other states don't have that blessing that we've got here in Illinois. And people, for example, in Florida, you'll find that in Florida, the risk pool, or what do you think about Florida? There's a lot of old people in Florida. The risk pool on the supplements means that they're much more expensive and people will get seduced into going to a zero premium plan and not understanding that in Florida, there is no Medicare supplement company. After that first year, they ain't taking you back without medical underwriting questions. These can represent very interesting options for coverage, hearing aids, some dental, some vision, and some additional benefits, a gym club membership, for example. But where we've got 29 drug programs, 
pretty competitive. We got 38 supplemental companies. That's really competitive. We currently have 52 advantage programs that want your business. So it's important to make a smart choice. And I would I fully expect there to be more than 52 next year because this is a growing part of the market because people are people are allured by the fact that it's a lower premium, but we just want to make sure we make a fully informed decision. Did you get any questions on those, Robin? We're coming right up against our finish. Yeah, we, we just crossed 830, so I want to be respectful of everybody's time and wrap up here. But just um, we did have one question come in about the movement, which I think you addressed, but I'll just reiterate it. Yes, you can move back and forth between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage during the annual enrollment period between October 15th and December 7th. Those benefits will start on the new calendar year of January 1st. But be mindful that if you are past that six month window of activating Part B of Medicare and you've been in Medicare for a while, you are going to have to apply for a Medigap plan, answer questions about your health, and you could be denied coverage. So you just wanna be mindful that that's not a guarantee. Moving back to original Medicare is a guarantee. Being able to pick up prescription drug coverage during the annual enrollment, guaranteed, no questions asked. But you will have to go through underwriting for a Medigap plan with every carrier but one in the state of Illinois. Um, the other question that we often get, and I just wanna point out to people is Medicare Advantage can be very flexible, but know that these are sold by county. So there's a certain amount of plans that are available in Cook and Lake and Will County, and they're not the same set of plans in DuPage or McHenry, okay? Some of, many of them are the same. We have so many options, 50, you know, 40, 50 plus plans in each of these counties. But just know that you're, you're gonna have an offering in the county that you're, um, you're living in. And then when you move or relocate, you'll get a special enrollment to change that plan if you wanna to continue to stay in that model. Um, I think we had one more question come in. Yes, it's being recorded and it will be posted. So for those of you that hung on and I think most of the group did tonight, thank you so much for your patience and your attention. We really appreciate it. Um, I lost David's screen. I don't know if anybody else can see it. I think we may have lost David too. Yes, I, um, I don't have his screen either. Yeah, um, but again, if you guys need to get a hold of us, um, Sue has our contact info. Um, MedicareSolutionsNetwork.com is the website. If you got 5% of this, you're ahead of most people. We've got this program going for many, many more nights um, coming up here leading up to the annual enrollment. Um, so feel free to pop back into another one. But Sue, thank you so much for your uh, time and attention tonight. It was very generous and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody have a good night and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.